Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we're gonna to be talking about fighting over the gun, specifically your gun, okay? Uh, the setup here, the situation is that you're being attacked by somebody, they don't have a gun, right? Because if they had a gun, they'd be shooting at you from, a, from more of a distance rather than trying to close in on you. So they either have a knife or they see that you got a gun and they're trying to get to your gun. Uh, the assumption is that they wanna get your gun so that they can kill you with it. And uh, we're going to be talking about a technique to deal with that, uh, how to stop this person from, your, from getting this gun uh, and, and killing you. It might all be, also be a situation where you got two people um, attacking you, maybe from different directions, uh, trying to basically grab your arms, uh, you know, keep your, you know, basically neutralize your arms so that they can get to your gun. Um, how are we going to deal with that? Now, important for me to say, uh, I do not invent techniques, okay? I'm really good at copying techniques, okay? So I'm a range safety officer. I've been, I've been a range safety officer now for about 12 years. Uh, and over the years, I've supervised ranges, and, uh, you know, a lot of people come to the range. Lots of different backgrounds, a lot of mil ex-military guys, ex-special forces guys, cops, ex-cops, military and police from uh, other parts of the world, okay? Um, I, I think recently I had a Canadian special forces uh guy that came to the range um i did not know there was such a thing as canadian special forces or apparently there is um so uh, basically i get all these people that come to the range a lot of times if they want to spat if they want to practice specialized techniques what they had to do was basically just set up some uh, some time uh where they could have the range to themselves so that they could do something like this uh and of course i have to be present right i'm, I'm responsible for the range so i'm watching i'm observing okay and i'm learning so that's how uh, pr pretty much all the stuff that's in my channel, that's, that's how I've, uh, I've amassed all this information. I, I copy it, okay? I do not invent stuff. All right, so let's get back to the situation now where somebody is trying to, you know, you're basically, you know, uh, right up against somebody that's trying to get to your gun. Uh, if you just take like your basic NRA personal protection, the technique that they show you, right, they, they teach shooting from the hip, okay? So, so even, you know, at the most basic gun training level, NRA personal protection, they have a method that they will teach you and they will, and you will practice if you take that class. Basically, you put your hand on your chest, pull the gun up, rotate, and you fire from the hip, okay? Keeping the gun basically like this at your body. So that, that's what they teach you in that class, okay? Um, now, going beyond that, okay, uh, a more, you know, more realistic, realistic situation is you're not going to be standing like this, right? You're going to be in a grappling match with somebody, and the hand's not going to be on your chest. The reason why they have you put your hand on your chest um, is so that you don't shoot your own hand. So they want you to be really aware of where your hand is. But realistically, somebody's going to be attacking you, right? So they're either going to be attacking you high or attacking you low, okay? So you can't have both hands. You can't have your hand and the gun on the same plane. So that's one of the first rules of gun grappling. Your hands don't go on the same plane. So if they're attacking you high, right? Well, this hand is up here. This hand's gonna come out. And what I what I teach people is, well, basically you, you can't turn the slide in towards your body, right? Because that's gonna jam up the gun. You have to hold it out like this. And you can actually use, place the, the, the grip of the gun against your body. Because if you get turned around, you can now use your body to orient the gun, okay? And you can get a sense of where the gun is pointed, right? So regardless of where you're at, right, you have some sense of where the gun is pointed. Now, if they're down here, right, which is a very likely situation if they're trying to get to your gun, right? So if your gun is in the holster here, right, and they're grabbing down here, and, uh, you know, come, bring your gun out, come over, the top, okay? shoot like that, okay? Right, so that's, that's very basic stuff, non-controversial stuff. I normally don't have the holster in this position. I just have it for the class, um, so it, it, it might be a little bit awkward reholstering. I actually don't have a second, my normal carry guns back here because I want to want to demonstrate something later on. So that's why you might see me struggling a little bit to get it back in the holster. That's not normally where I carry it. Uh, but anyway, going beyond that, so these are your two basic techniques, right? You either here or here, okay? Now, what happens if you're in a more messy situation, right? Where basically, you know, um, you're losing the gunfight, okay? You're losing it. They're gonna, they, they, you know, you know you're, they're about to get your gun. You're about to lose this gunfight. You just, you're being overpowered. You don't have the leverage. Um, 
if you're being overpowered and you're like this here trying to bring the gun around, then knocking it out, all right? Like a, a simple solution that I learned that works um, is if you need to grab the gun and pull it to where you need it, do that, right? You can also, now you've got your elbow here, right? You can strike with your elbow, pull the gun here, grip it tight, right? and, you can, and basically fire the gun. Now, you're going to jam the gun, right? Because the gun obviously did not cycle. So all you're going to do is you just wounded the guy, okay? Back up, tap and wrap. Okay, right? It's not going to hurt your hand. As long as you grab the gun tight like this, right? It's not going to hurt your hand, okay? Um, so a very basic technique. Now, uh, this is going to work especially well if you have a situation where you have two guys, right? Pulling on your arms, you know, and you get your, you know, you get to your gun, He's put, it, you know, if they pull your arms apart like this, I mean, now you're screwed. But if you keep, if you lock your hands together like this, right, you know, now you can keep your hands. Now you got a chance of turning this gun, right, you know, you know, using your elbow, hit with the elbow if you need to, bring it around, and you can still keep your finger off the trigger while you're doing this. Because basically, this finger over here, basically, is on the trigger guard, and that finger's over there, and that can go ba easily back and forth between the two. So basically you're here, you're coming around here, right? You're fighting, you bring your gun into your hand, squeeze it hard, fire the gun, okay? Right now, basically you got a jammed gun. That guy's probably gonna shit himself, right? Because he just heard the gun go bang. So now you have a chance to do your tap and wreck. But what happens if, 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 if he's just wounded, right? He's just wounded, he's now, you're still fighting with him, right? You got a dead gun here that's not gonna work, right? All right, you need to tap and rack. Well, listen, tap, rack, fire, okay? Great thing about the optics, it is a great place to hook and rack your slide, okay? Um, you know, just expanding upon that, same thing now. You have a situation, you got the gun here, right? You're fighting, you're hitting with the elbow, you're turning, right? You come over here, fire your shot, all right, all right? You, you can't get to your leg, right? Use his freaking forehead, right? Tap, rack, fire, okay? Um, all great techniques that work, okay? Uh, you see me do this how many times, okay? I got a little bit of a slide bite there, right? Just that little bit of a slide bite, a little discoloration, maybe from the, the muzzle, from the muzzle blast, right? Because, you know, actually, from, that's, that's from back here, because that's over here. That's from the, from, the, uh, from the gas coming out of the port as the gun opened up just a little bit, right? So if you hold it tight, it shouldn't move at all. On one of those times, I didn't have it quite tight enough. I got a little bit of slide bite. Hey, I mean, that's nothing, okay? What if you got a smaller gun, all right? This is where it gets a little tricky because with the smaller gun, and that's why I got my regular carry here. Yeah, you got to be really careful. You, you get your hand back, you know? Uh, you you got to be really careful. But yeah, this will definitely work, okay? And this is something I'm going to do exceptionally careful, right? Again, this is a situation now. Squeezing tight, okay, tap, rack, boom, okay? Um, now, w w here's the thing, especially with the small gun, definitely a chance that you might hurt yourself, okay? But we are talking about a situation where you're going to die. You're losing a fight over the gun. You need a way to take initiative back. Um, so, yeah, this is a very risky technique to do under stress, but then you got to ask yourself, would you rather have... A bullet in your hand or a bullet in your head, you know, okay? Um, so it's a risky technique. You've seen me do it so many times. Definitely not, it's not even burning me over here, right? Because that, that was the part that was close to the muzzle. No burns here whatsoever. Um, the, the problem with something like this is finding a place that will let you practice this technique. Um, and, you know, and basically, like, like I've only let, like, uh, uh, basically cops do this technique. Because, hey, you guys are cops, you're, you know, basically under your own department's insurance and stuff like that. Um, so, so finding some place to practice this, because you got to get over that hump. You got to get over the mental hump. You got to do this enough times where you will have confidence that you can do it. And here's the thing, you cannot be scared of this, right? If you're going to, because if you're holding the gun loose because you're scared, that's when you're going to shoot yourself in the hand. You got to grip this tight, push into it, lean into it, have the confidence that you're not going to hurt your hand. Uh, so that you can uh, safely execute this technique. So uh, I hope this was interesting to you guys. Um, drop some comments below. Uh, 
you know, I, I, you know, I'm gonna, I'm, it's kind of, I expect that the, this is a video that will, you know, there will be some people that do not like this technique, and that's fine. I mean, I, you know, don't do something that you're not comfortable with, okay? Uh, you know, I mean, especially with a short gun like this, okay? Short gun like this, it, you know, you really got to be, you really got to be, uh, you know, do it with the larger gun. Do it with a Glock 17 where you got lots of hand room over there, right? After you've done that a bunch of times, and then you feel confident and you believe in yourself, then you can try it with a smaller gun. Uh, at some point so drop some comments below it helps with the algorithms you know circulates the video uh if you got any of your own ideas by all means post it you know, I, I i know that there are other techniques out there i've actually i've, I've done them in a you know in a gym situation i used to own a, uh, a a boxing gym and i would have muay thai guys in there and i would have all these martial arts guys there they would have fake guns and fake knives and we go through all these techniques and it's like yeah that's a really awesome technique you know i would do with them i would get really good at them I would go out to get some lunch. I would come back, let's say, uh, uh, an hour later, and I, I already forgot how to do the technique. Okay, so this is a very basic technique where you're just trying to get that muzzle into line. This is something that I think anybody uh, can make work if they have the confidence that they can fire that gun uh, and 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 that it's not going to hurt them. Okay. Um, so uh, thanks for watching. I'll talk to you guys soon. Oh, hit the bell button so you get the notifications uh, after you subscribe because a lot of times YouTube. Uh, I, I think they're shadow banning me. Thanks a lot for watching. Hey, something I wanted to add. Um, first time I saw somebody doing this technique, my question to them was, why put your hand here? Why not put your, why not grab back here, right? And use that leverage. The problem with taking, you know, using this grip over here is if you don't take control of this really important piece of real estate right here on the gun, the other guy is okay so what you're doing is you by grabbing here you're denying the person that you're fighting with the ability to put their hand on the gun because basically whoever grabs the gun here is the person that's going to have the most control okay from here that's not you know you're still gripping the gun one-handed here i've got I, I actually got two hands on the gun and my hands are tight and now i have maximum leverage okay so that's why you grab the gun here not try to grab here the other important point uh I want to make them is if you execute this technique right we're going to jam up the gun okay um something to also consider is let's say you fire that one shot let's say you only wound him right um or or you know you still don't manage to get the gun online and and you end up discharging uh somewhere else um uh, and they take your gun well now you've got, they, they're basically taking a jammed up gun. So you've made this gun uh, unoperational. So they have to do something to get this gun back into operation. Uh, chances are that they don't have the training that you have uh, to, to immediately tap and rack when the gun doesn't work, okay? Um, so, so that's another thing to consider. By, by firing that shot, um, regardless of whether you only wound them or they end up taking the gun from you anyway because maybe they're just twice as big as you or whatever they're taking a gun that doesn't work and now they have to get that gun back and working and that gives you you know that gives you a chance to take back initiative okay so now you've got an opportunity to do something um where you wouldn't have that same opportunity uh if they if, if they basically took a loaded gun from you that was operational so uh, another thing to consider with regards to this technique. So again, thanks for watching. I'll talk to you guys soon.